You see this right here? We have open water. It is the middle of winter. We're up here in Michigan, and you would sure think we'd have ice by now, but no, we've had a lot of inconsistent weather, and so we've still got open water. Now, because we have open water, I have a very simple goal today. I want to catch some fish from the bank, hopefully some perch, but really I'm open for whatever. Got a couple ultralights. You know the drill, folks. I'm just here trying to catch some fish. I get a chance to fish. I'm going to take it. We're doing this thing. Let's get started. Two ultralights and some ultralight tackle. I'm going to go ahead and get started with a gulp minnow one inch on a drop shot and i am going to fish disgustingly slow gotta make something to eat and this time of the year they don't want to move around a whole lot so you gotta have to just put it in their face and hold it there now i made my leader about i don't know 12 to 14 inches and then i'm using a seven foot ultralight this is the temple fork you know one thing to remember this time of year is you can obviously still catch fish i mean people ice fish all winter and they catch fish all winter long the trick is during ice fishing season you're obviously vertically jigging and so you can hold a bait in front of a fish's face for you know as long as you really want and that's why i decided i wanted to fish with a drop shot because i think there's some yellow perch in here they're going to be towards the bottom but i'm able to basically vertically present my bait and i can fish it really slow oh i was getting a bite Son of a gun, I bet that was a bluegill to tell you the truth. That makes me extremely optimistic. Literally first cast. We moved down just a little bit, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the fact that during this time of year, you don't want to be moving and grooving a whole lot. You kind of focus in on areas that you think have a high percentage chance and you fish the crap out of them. There's one, yes, yes. Patience, baby, patience pays off. Is this gonna be a little bass? No way. I didn't expect to catch a bass today. God, that's what's up, baby. Just a little guy, but it's a fish. Holy smokes, guys, I was starting to get a little discouraged, I'm not gonna lie to you. I popped him right there in the noggin. Man, that fish is cold. Just goes to show, though, you can still catch fish this time of year, even from bank. You just have to have patience. Man, I've been fishing for quite some time now. Probably about an hour. Had a bite on my first cast. Haven't got a bite since. A little drop shot with a gulp minnow. I'm not saying it's a big fish, but it's a fish. Feels like a dang ice cube. All right. Well, that gives me confidence to keep fishing. I have a problem. Once I catch a fish, I always get really excited. I start working my bait too fast. This time of year, you absolutely can't do that. He was right along this bank. It wasn't even all that far off the bank, but I think there's a little bit of a drop off. We're gonna get another, we're gonna get another. Ooh, come on. Positive attitude. Having a positive attitude when the fishing is tough is such a difference maker too. Just gotta keep coaching myself. We got this, we got this. We're gonna catch another fish, we're gonna catch another fish. Keep a smile on that face. There's a fish, no way. This fish bit while it was sinking. Is this a little bass? Or is this a crappie? Is this gonna be a crappie or a bass? Can't tell. It's a little bass. This one must have been suspended. Oh man. I was trying to teach myself to have some patience and a positive attitude and it paid off. Now again, another small fish, but a dang old icicle fish, man. He's freaking freezing. He bit that thing as it was sinking. He was obviously suspended. Holy smokes. Guys, I know, my, my brain is pretty much frozen, so I have uh, very little going on in my noggin right now, but I'll tell you what, that's freaking awesome. All right. All right, buddy, we'll see you later. I did not expect to catch bass today. I was thinking I was gonna catch a couple perch, and if I was lucky, I might catch a crappie or two, but I've caught two bass, which I'm totally okay with that. Folks, I tell you what, even though I am cold, I figured I would go ahead and show you what I am using to catch these fish. I've got a Temple Fork Trout and Panfish Ultralight. This is the seven foot fast model. It has a Daiwa Tatula size 1000 with six pound uh, Berkeley Fireline braid and then four pound monofilament leader. I've got that little one inch gulp minnow on there. It's got a chartreuse back and a white belly. And then I've got a one eighth ounce drop shot weight. And I think the hook I'm using, I believe it's a Hayabusa drop shot hook. It's like a number six, I want to say. All in all, the setup's working quite well for me. <laughs> now, I know I've only caught a couple of dinky bass, but I tell you what, this time of year, catching anything is always a good deal. And catching two bass in about an hour and a half is actually pretty solid. I gotta figure I can catch one or two more, so I'm gonna get back to it. But anyways, if you have any questions about this little rig right here or this uh, setup, feel free to drop a comment below.
Norma and I are down at the lake and we're gonna try to catch another fish or two. What do you think? Can we get one to bite? What do you think? I better try the donkey tail junior. Doesn't seem like there's very many fish out there that are bottom oriented. Yes, this is gonna be a crappie, I'll bet. I will almost guarantee it. No way, it's a big bass. Son of a gun, son of a gun. I gotta be careful here. When I say big, I mean big for ultralight, not necessarily a giant. Bigger than the ones we caught earlier. On the donkey tail junior, this fish was suspended right up here in this corner. There's a drop off in this corner. And this fish was on that steep drop Man, I tell you what, if anything, we're proving that largemouth will still eat even when we're talking about like 34 degree water. All right, Donkey Tail Jr. right there. We got Karma. What's up, Carms? Like to smell the fish? What do you think about that fish, Karma? Yeah, it's interesting, huh? <laughs> nice little chunky bass right there, boys. Wasn't necessarily expecting that. I thought that was going to be, I thought that was going to be a crappie for sure. All right, well, send her home. I feel a lot better now. I just like, as much as I had fun catching those two fish earlier, I felt like I still needed one more. And I'm glad we were able to get that fish. I'm really surprised we weren't able to get any panfish today. It's all been bass. Talking about four pound nanofill to a uh, two and a half pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm going with that really light fluorocarbon because I want something practically invisible. Um, I'm using a 132nd ounce chartreuse mule jig with a true chartreuse donkey tail junior. Just sucked it in as it was sinking. You have to really pay attention to that line. You know, the yellow perch, I think, are going to be closer to the bottom. They're more of a bottom-oriented fish, but crappie, bass, bluegill, they're mostly going to be suspended. And so it's super key that you got to watch that line. I'm not huge on nanofill, but the nice thing about it is it is visible, so I can definitely see whenever there's a bite. Yeah, I threw that drop shot around a lot in here. Never had a bite. And then I decided I'd throw the donkey tail junior around. And the reason I did that is because that drop shot does a great job of combing over the bottom. But a swim bait like this or other small plastics that you drift on a jig head, they're going to slowly fall right through those suspended fish. And so this bait is so much better at targeting the fish that are suspended in the water column, whereas the drop shot's great for those fish that are right off the bottom. That's why I brought both rods down because honestly, I knew that there was a chance they would either hit one or the other. So I gotta tell you, one thing that I really, really love is how much my son loves karma. I'll put his feet on Karma and she's just like, not exactly thrilled by it, but she just tolerates it. And uh, Charles will just laugh up a storm. I'll tell you what, dogs, man, they are such easy entertainment, even for little babies, apparently. There he is. Yes, sir. It ain't much, but it's the species I wanted. That right there is a yellow perch. My friends, it hit me that I should try a uh, slip float rig with a little plastic on there because I figured that that would be a good way to present this thing vertically. As I've mentioned a couple times, it is important to position vertically this time of year because the fish like to suspend so much. So uh, I decided I would do that and it paid off. Now here we are a week later, there's actually ice on a lot of the lake, but there's still some open water. And I thought, hey, you never know. I might as well try this out and see if it works out. So I'm hoping we can catch another, there's another bite. Oh, definitely one had it. There he is. It's a little bit better one, I think. Yeah, a little bit better. It's a chunk, a little chunker boy. We dialed him in. We just had to change our rig up a little bit. I'm just using this little like crappie plastic deal and I've got a 1 16th ounce mule jig and then I've got a little peg float that I rigged up as a slip float instead. Um, these floats right here can be used as a slip float or a peg float. And there you have it. Not a bad little perch. I'll take that any day of the week. Oh, and there he goes. All right. See you, buddy. Come on. Go ahead. You're okay. There you go. All right. See you, bud. Now I haven't used a slip float a ton in my day, so this is kind of new to me. Well, this bead right here keeps getting caught on my uh, leader line because I've got braid to monofilament. Moving forward, I'm definitely gonna wanna either use a really short leader and get the bead above it, or I'm going to want to use straight mono or fluorocarbon because that bead gets caught on there. So I have to actually kind of cast a little funky 
Um, I just put it above the leader line and then I just kind of pitch it out there. But moving forward, I'm probably not gonna rig this up on braid. We are vertically presenting a little jig near the bottom, except we're casting it out there, which is so key. I'm telling you, this little slip float right here is something that you gotta have in your arsenal. And I can't believe I didn't rig it up the other day. It kind of dawned on me after I had fished with the drop shot and just the straight jig, I'm like, you know what? I need to try a slip float. That might be the key to catching some of these perch. And sure enough, here we are, we've caught two of them. So, oh, there's a bite. He's got, oh, he had it for sure. What the heck? It might have been a small bluegill or a small perch just blinking the tail over and over again. This is just some random crappie plastic I had in my uh, bag. I don't even know what the brand is or anything, but I'm going to go ahead and put a fresh coat of this Mega Strike stuff on there. I don't know if it actually makes a difference or not, but it gives me a little bit of confidence. Put just a little bit of scent on there. This time of year, I don't think you can go wrong with just putting a little scent on there. The thing I like about this stuff is it's not like super gross. It's kind of just like a a little gluey. It's not too like oily and it's not too stinky. So I kind of like it because you, you can use scents, but then you're not getting your hands just disgusting every time you do. There's a bite. Does he have it? He's got it. Little guy. That was a better hook set. I didn't over set the hook. A lot of the little bites I've been getting, I've been setting the hook, I think too hard and yanking it out of their mouth. This little guy was playing with it, but I jacked him. Nothing big, but again, it's not necessarily about catching giants today. The goal really with this video is to show you that you can still catch fish even in the coldest of weather, even when there's ice on the lake. You just have to modify your approach and you certainly gotta have patience. So the first thing you need for this rig is some type of bobber stop. As you can see right there, I've got that little green bobber stop on my line. What that is used for is you position that where you want your float to stop. So essentially this is your depth control. The next thing that you're gonna add is a little bead and the bead basically comes up to that bobber stop and then it keeps the bobber from going up and over the stop. Um, then you're going to go ahead and do some type of slip float. In this case, I'm using a mule peg float. And again, I'm rigging it as a slip float by just going through the black piece and out the bottom. You can also use this float as a peg float. And basically all you have to do to do that is you take out the peg and then you just put the float wherever you want and peg it to your line. Um, two options, but in this case, we're doing a slip float. And then you go down and you tie on a jig or whatever you want to tie on. In this case, I did a 1 16th ounce white mule jig on a loop knot and then I've got a little crappie plastic on there and that seems to be working okay. Well, I tell you what, I have run out of time, but that's okay. To wrap up today's video, the moral of the story is that even though that water temp right there is really cold and the fish are very inactive, you can still catch fish this time of year. It really comes down to a few things. One, modify your approach, use the right rigs. Two, slow down and be patient. I can tell you, I am not a patient person. I have like a, the shortest attention span on the face of the earth. Squirrel, I'm just kidding. Um, but I do have a really short attention span and I'm very impatient. And if I can catch fish in these cold water conditions, you can too. I believe in you. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season and a very Merry Christmas. Thank you so very much for watching. Get out there and go catch a couple fish in the cold weather. We'll catch you next time.